Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm so glad to see you and I'm glad that you found your way here. My name is Danielle Rochford and I am an online grade seven and eight teacher and I've been doing that for the past 10 years. I've been a classroom teacher for a total of 21 years, so I have a few years under my belt. <laughs> uh, but today, um, we're going to actually be taking a look at Google Classroom. This is a program that I have been using for a very long time, and I know that on my channel, I've had a number of people contact me about how to use it. Um, it's a, a program that is brand new to many teachers, particularly those that are finding themselves thrown into the realm of working online. So I wanted to take a few moments to look at some of the best ways that we can use Google Classroom with online students. Now, because there can be a lot of things to do to set up Google Classroom and get it ready for students and add them and assignments, organization, all that kind of stuff, there's, there's, it can be overwhelming sometimes. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I am creating this series of videos. So they're short segments of time that break down the process of everything that you need to do. So today we are going to focus on creating your very first Google Classroom. Let's pop on over to the computer and take a look. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to go to classroom.google.com so that we can log in to our Google Classroom. You will see the, um, the same page that we have here um, on the screen. We go to go to classroom and it will prompt you to sign into your account. If you've never created a class before, um, you will see sort of an empty screen in front of you and it'll tell you that you have no classes. And so what we're going to do to create our very first class is we're going to go up to the plus button uh, in the upper right hand corner of your screen. And you'll notice as I hover over that, it says create or join a class. Click on it and we're going to choose create a class. If you are accessing Google Classroom from an account that is not administered by a G Suite for Education account, um, you will receive this message where it does verify that you are um, not planning to use this with students. Now, the reason for that is because G Suite for Education, um, those accounts really provide some good student privacy. Um, and it's not the same as in if you were using a, um, uh, if you were using Google Classroom with a personal account. Um, so if your school has not signed up for G, G Suite for Education, I would really encourage you to do that because it does offer privacy settings for students that are very, very important. All right, so now our next step in creating our class is giving it a name. Um, so let's say we're going to do our class on, um, and we're, we're going to do a Google Classroom class, okay? So all about learning Google Classroom. Um, you can choose um, a section, a subject, a room if you would like to, but those are not mandatory sections. Uh, when I create my own classes, um, I'll put the subject area as the class name, um, the section, I will do the which term it is because I break mine up into the different terms and they will have, so for example, in science, they will have a science term one Google Classroom. And then when we move to, move to term two, they will have a science term two Google Classroom and the term one gets archived. Um, so you can put a section in there if you would like to, but you don't, um, you don't have to. You can include a subject if you'd like to in a room that would be where it's located. For me, um, I put in um, the, the Zoom uh, classroom because that is where all of my students meet. We meet online in Zoom. All right, once all that information is put in, you're gonna hit create. And it'll take just a few moments to think um, as it prepares everything for you. Um, and then it will bring up your, um, your class. Um, if you've never accessed things before, it will give you a few little tutorial type of hints where things are. Um, and, uh, and so you can go through that to help familiarize yourself with it. 
Um, but what we're going to look at here is what our next steps are. So now we have created a class on Google Classroom. And so what do we need to do now? Well, the next thing that I do um, is I take a look at the settings. Okay, and so you can find the settings cog in the upper right hand corner. You click on that and it brings up all the class details. Okay, so some of these are the ones that we chose at the beginning as we were setting up the class. So if you had a, um, a section and a room and the subject, those would appear here. But you'll also notice that there's a, a place here where you can put in a class description. Um, I use this part for um, sharing what the class is all about. So generally on a class syllabus, you might have a brief description of um, some of the, the main concepts that you're going to be covering in the class, what the class is about. That's what I usually put into this section here, okay? And then if we scroll down, we have a couple of different sections, a general section. Um, this is the class code. So um, we'll cover this in a later video where we talk about um, adding students. Um, students can add themselves using a class code. Okay, and so that is the class code there. Um, and some of the different things that you can do is you can disable that class code, you can reset it, um, or you can even copy it if you're going to be sharing it with someone. Um, this next portion, the stream, um, I actually take a look at, you know, depending on the class that I have and the age group of the students, I might change the setting here. Um, so on the class stream, um, you can allow uh, students to post and comment, so that allows them to be able to do that, uh, to do both. Um, you can only allow students to comment, so they can't make posts themselves, but they can respond and comment on a post created by a teacher. Um, or you can have the option for only teachers being able to post or comment, so students don't have um, any ability to be able to do those. Okay? Usually what I choose is students can only comment. Um, so what that does is if I make an announcement or if I have some type of interactive post that I put onto the stream, students can then respond to that post. But then I don't have them going crazy with all of their you know, own individual posts and things like that. So it helps to control things, what's going on in the stream a little bit better that way. Um, also here, classwork on the stream. Um, the default is to show condensed notifications. Um, I, what I actually do is I totally hide notifications. And what that does is um, it makes sure that on the class stream, all that you will see are the, um, the comments that you place directly on the stream, okay? For some of these other options, um, show attachment and details, show condensed notifications, what's happening there is you will have, you know, stream posts that are there, but also anything that you post as an assignment will also be uh, placed onto the, the class stream. I don't want that in any of my classes. I find that it ends up making things very confusing. Um, and so I totally hide notifications of any of the classwork on the class stream, okay? So classwork does not appear on the class stream at all. It is limited to the classwork page, which I'll show you in just a moment. Um, here, the next portion, uh, next portion, you can choose to show delete, deleted items or not. Um, I usually leave that checked off. I don't, uh, I don't change that from the default. Then we have a grading section, okay? So Google Classroom uh, can show students their grades um, overall, sort of an overall um, grade there, and you can choose whether they see that or not. Um, and so what I do is I do allow students to be able to see their grade, um, and I do a total point. So I'll choose total points here instead of weighted by categories. And I make sure that the overall grade is visible to students. If you don't want them to see that, then you can make sure that, that just stays off and they won't see um, an overall grade. They will still be able to see their assignments and any grades that you hand back, but they won't see an overall grade for that class. Um, for me, I show my students their grades because I have divided them up into term one classroom, term two, term three, term four, and so it works all right that way. Um, if you have a year-long Google Classroom, um, you might find that it doesn't work as easily that way, um, but if you divide things up 
Um, I have found for me this year that it has worked quite well. Um, you can also add different categories, okay? And, um, and their default points. So for example, when you go to post an assignment, um, you can choose a grade category um, and it will automatically bring up the default points. Okay, so for me, um, I have a couple of different categories that, uh, that I use in my classes. Um, I do resources, checkpoints, mastery checks, in class tasks, all right, and let's, we'll put that there. Okay, so there we have a few grade categories. I can keep them all as default, default points 100, or if I want to change that up, um, I could do that. Say I just wanted that one. Uh, maybe we'll have this 50. Okay, so there are the default points that we've um, associated with that. And then once we're done with all of those, we can save those settings. All right, so our, save, our settings are now saved, which is good. So the next thing we want to take a look at is um, the presentation of our Google Classroom. Um, so up at the top here, we have this header picture um, that Google Classroom has automatically chosen for us. We do have the option to change it if we would like to. Okay, so you can select a pre-made theme and Google has some really nice pictures that are already available. They've even divided them up into different subject areas that might work particularly well. And so you can go through those and maybe choose one uh, that would work, okay? But um, if you are adventurous and would like to create your own, uh, you can also upload a photo, okay? And so um, you would have to um, have a JPEG file the size of the banner um, in order to make that work. Um, but, um, but you are able to do that. And so why don't I actually just go through and show you that quickly. Um, so the, I have a number of, in my classes, I do make uh, my own banners. Um, I've actually done a number of them that um, are, um, they go along with the, the cover of the textbook. So I've, I've created them to, uh, to reflect what their textbook looks like. Um, I find that that helps my students because um, just sort of at a quick glance, they can see exactly you know, what subject is. Um, so it's, uh, it's an image that helps to, um, to make that identific identification really, really well. Um, so why don't I find one of my files here? Let's see, I'm going to, let me bring up my science, uh, science eight banner. Now, if you are interested in creating your own, um, I, I do have this, uh, another tutorial video on my list of videos to do, um, how to create these banners using Google Slides. Um, but uh, if you already have a way, uh, before I'm able to post that tutorial, um, the, uh, the size, the JPEG size that you use for that banner um, in pixels, would be 1920 by 484, okay? And so um, those would be the pixel size that you would use or pixel dimensions that you would use um, for an image uh, to be able to have it work as your banner, okay? So I'm going to upload a photo here. I can select it from my computer. That's actually my downloads, there we go. And here is my banner, it's gonna upload. And then I can use the cropping tool to decide if I want all of it or just a portion of it. There we go, looks good. And I'm going to select class theme. And so now you'll notice that my banner uh, is up there instead of the, um, the picture that was automatically chosen by Google. Something else that you will notice is that when my banner changed, um, the the colors that were used for text and whatnot were also changed, okay? So whatever you choose for your banner up here, Google uses that to decide what the theme colors are going to be for your Google Classroom, okay? And we can see that on the, the Classwork page as well. The Create button is now a darker color, whereas before it was blue, okay? 
Um, so, um, so that's what um, that's what that does. When you choose your um, your Google Classroom header, uh, it determines the colors that are used for your Google Classroom. So there we've done it. We have officially created our very first Google Classroom. Not too bad, right? It's not too difficult, absolutely. <laughs> uh, in our next video, we're going to take a look at how we can add students and add co-teachers to the Google Classroom. I look forward to seeing you there. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure that you do that and click on the notification bell to make sure that you get notifications when new videos go live. In the description box below, I'm going to be including a link to uh, the registration page for my website. So if you would like to register to receive notifications uh, before anybody else on when these next videos are going live, you can do that below. We'll see you next time, guys.